Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, um, so all, all, all this week, um, we've been seeing, I mean, of course, my talks have had perverse sheaves all, all over the place, and we've seen them uh, in lots of other talks as well. And um, it's always meant, um, well, some complex of sheaves uh, with coefficients in, um, s well, either the complex numbers or, or, or QL bar, but in any case, in characteristic 0. Um, and, uh, and the varieties that we've been looking at, um, well, uh, mostly in my talks, they've been over C, um, in, in a lot of other talks as well. But um, sometimes they're, they're over a finite field or, or the algebraic closure of a finite field. And um, in this setting, I mean, in the setting that we've been working in, um, I mean, one of the reasons perverse sheaves are omnipresent in geometric representation theory is that uh, there are a lot of powerful tools that, that um, let you extract information from them. And these powerful tools mostly come from uh, the, the, the monograph of, of BBD. Um, so things like the, the, the decomposition theorem, um, that, that's, that's come up. Uh, the, the theory of, of weights and, and purity um, this has been implicit in a lot of the things that, that I've said, even when I didn't mention it explicitly. Um, but t today, uh, in, in this talk, uh, I'm going to switch settings a bit. So um, in, in this talk, uh, perverse sheaves, well, um, a, a lot of what I'm going to say today, I mean, it, it, it's a generalization in, in some honest sense of stuff that holds a complex coefficient. So, you, you can interpret everything I say with complex coefficients, but it's you know, new and interesting in, in, in the case where you, you take uh, coefficients um, in, um, in a field of positive characteristic. Um, a, a fair number of, uh, of the statements I'm going to make um, actually work if you instead take coefficients in something like uh, the p-adic integers, or maybe even just the integers. Um, but I think I, I'm... I'm not going to belabor too much about when that's OK and when, when that's not. So everything I'm going to write on the board is, is fine with field coefficients. Um, the varieties, on the other hand, the, the, the varieties are, 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 are always going to be over C in, in, in this talk. Um, so, so some of what I'm going to say you, you could do if you, if you had a variety over a field whose characteristic was different from the, the characteristic of your coefficients. Um, I mean, usually that's OK, but, uh, but I. You know, anyway, I don't want to worry about the complications that, 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 that could arise then. So, so, um, so here are the, 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 the difficulties that, 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 that come up. Um, so one thing, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing is that um, uh, things fail to be semi-simple a lot. Um, so... Uh, yesterday, uh, when I discussed the semi-simplicity of the induction and restriction functors, well, that was from the decomposition theorem and, and Braden's work on hyperbolic localization, and both of those things depend on, on the theory of weights and, and purity. So, so both of those things go, go wrong in, 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 uh, in, in positive characteristic. Um, and um, and uh, the other thing is that, is that things are hard to compute. Um, and um, in, in the second sentence, by the word things, uh, I basically mean uh, stocks of, uh, of intersection cohomology complexes. Um, so I, I told you a, a little bit about, uh, um, I, I mean, I men mentioned this sort of in passing yesterday, that uh, you know, the, the way the theory of the generalized Springer correspondence plugs into, into the theory of character sheaves um, is in a computational way, and there's this algorithm called the lustig shoji algorithm, which computes the stocks of, of, uh, of simple perverse sheaves on, on, the, on the unipotent variety or, or the nilpotent cone. Well, it computes the stocks of perverse sheaves with, with, with complex coefficients. And um, uh, a key reason that algorithm works, oh, and of course, you know, I mean, 
the, the other sort of maybe most famous class of, of ICs is uh, uh, intersection cohomology complexes on Schubert varieties. And in that case, the stocks are computed by kajadan lustig polynomials. And in both those cases, on flag varieties and on the, on the nilpotent cone, um, a, a key uh, fact that um, makes the, the computation work is that the, the, the stocks uh, are known in advance of the computation to vanish in odd degrees. Um, and uh, this, this odd degree vanishing, it came up in, um, in uh, Victor's first talk as well when he mentioned uh, the, um, the, the work on the Katz conjecture. Um, and this vanishing in, in, in odd degrees, the reason it holds is, well, it's, it's, a, it's a purity argument. Um, so in positive characteristic, um, it's not just that the purity argument is unavailable, it's that this odd degree vanishing is false. Um, so, so, so those things go wrong. So I thought um, before, uh, I mean, before I get to sort of the, the main statements about, uh, uh, well, anyway, the, the, yeah, I guess the, the, the topic is modular Springer correspondence. So before I get to the, the, the main statements of, of, of that theory, um, I thought I would, I would do a warm up today to, to sort of illustrate what kinds of things can happen. Um, and the, 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 the warm up uh, involves the, the Springer resolution for, for SL2. So, um, or a actually, let's, let's take GL2. I want to take GL2 just to um, avoid having a, a, an extra local system to, to worry about. So, um, so there's the Springer resolution. There's this map pi, and um, in Nick's talk yesterday, he he told us uh, uh, explicitly what what these varieties are. So the the Springer resolution is the cotangent bundle of P1, and this uh, is uh, C2 mod plus or minus one. And um, so so let K be a field, and then. Um, I'm going to write down something which is, uh, well, it's going to be the Springer sheaf with coefficients in k. So what I want to do is just take the constant sheaf with value k rather than c and push it forward. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shift by 2 to, to, just to make it perverse. So 2 is the, the dimension of, of these varieties. Um, so so the, the, the first, oh, um, actually, before, before I before I do that, um, let me also give names to the nilpotent orbits. Um, there there are two nilpotent orbits here. There's one called the the regular nilpotent orbit. Um, so it's the orbit of the nilpotent matrix zero one zero zero, and that's that's almost the whole thing. It, that, that's uh, well, this is equal to everything except zero, and C zero is the is the other nilpotent orbit, the zero nilpotent orbit. Okay, so um, so here's a here's an easy observation. I mean, this is clear from the things I've written on on the board already. Um, pi is an isomorphism over over the regular nil, nilpotent orbit. So if you just restrict uh, this uh, um, Springer sheaf with coefficients in K to, to the regular nilpotent orbit, well, you just get the constant sheaf uh, with, with 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 a shift. And if you um, Restrict it to the point zero. Um, well, this is like what I had in, in, in my very first talk. Then you're computing the cohomology of the Springer fiber over that point, which is P1. And the cohomology of, uh, of, of, of P1, um, it doesn't really depend on the coefficients. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it, it's uh, well, it's one dimensional in degrees. Well, I've shifted it by two, so this is. Uh, uh, one dimensional in, in degrees uh, zero and minus two, and it's, it's zero elsewhere. Um, so, so, so far, nothing complicated has happened, and I haven't written anything on the board that, that's, uh, that's different from, from uh, characteristic zero. Um, so here's an exercise, and this is, uh, this is harder than the other things I've written on the board called, called exercises. So this is maybe medium difficulty. Um, uh, and it's, 
well, the, the, the exercise is, is um, uh, compute, uh, so form the intersection cohomology complex uh, for the, the regular nilpotent orbit here, and then restrict it to zero and compute what that is, compute the stock at, at zero of that. Um, so this is not a question that you can answer just by sort of formally manipulating sheaf functors with adjunction properties and that kind of thing. You, you have to sort of um, get your hands on, on, on what this variety is, and you have to sort of go back and remember some beginning algebraic topology. So, so I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the answer. Um, so, um, so the ith cohomology of this, uh, of this stock uh, well, it's, I mean, in each degree, it's either going to vanish or be one-dimensional. Um, so I have to tell you the, the degrees in which it vanishes or is one-dimensional. And this depends on, on the characteristic of, of K. So if the characteristic of K is not 2, then it's just like in the complex setting. Uh, I mean, even in the complex setting, there, there's a computation to, to, to do here. Um, so in the complex setting, this you, you get something non-zero only in degree minus two, uh, and it vanishes in, in all other degrees. But when the characteristic is two, it's a bit different. Um, you get non-zero cohomology in two degrees, um, minus two and minus one, and then it vanishes otherwise. Um, and um, I want to point out a, a feature of the number minus one. It's odd. Um, so that's, a, that's an example of this failure to vanish in, in, in odd degrees. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a hint for, this, uh, for, for doing this computation. Um, the hint is that um, the regular nilpotent orbit, well, Nick told us what it is. So Nick told us that the whole nilpotent cone is C2 mod plus or minus 1. So this is C2 minus the origin and then mod out by, by plus or minus 1. And that, well, that has the homotopy type of, um, of real projective 3 space. And the key point is that when you compute the cohomology of RP3 uh, with field coefficients, the answer is different in characteristic 2 compared to all other characteristics. And that's, that, that, that's the difference that, 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 that you're seeing here. Um, so, um, so by the way, I, I w w want to mention that, you know, um, uh, if you're, um, well, some, at some point in the past, I was, I was scared of perverse issues with coefficients and, and positive characteristic. And this example, um, I mean, th this exercise, basically, Daniel Juteau taught me everything that's in this exercise. And that, I mean, somehow, a lot of the things that can happen and a lot of the features in this exercise and the next one, there's, there's one more exercise in, in the warm-up. Um, they, they give you a feel for, for the kind of things one, one, one might expect and the kind of things that one should, should pay, attention for, to pay attention to. So, um, so, so here's a corollary of this exercise. Um, <coughs> so um, C reg, the, the regular uh, nilpotent orbit, it's um, How do I know this? Uh, I mean, uh, there isn't, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of answer you, you want. Oh, it's part of the exercise, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's part of the exercise. <laughs> um, oh, oh, yeah, so um, l let me also make a, an advertisement. Um, there's going to be, uh, well, well, you know, I'm, Trying to uh, you know advertise the the the, the value of uh, perverse sheaves in, in positive characteristic. So there's going to be a seminar. Um, start is it starting? Oh, maybe there's going to be an organizational meeting next week sometime. And then um, uh, Peter Fiebig and Daniel Juteau, uh are the leaders of it, and and I'm also a leader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, 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 Okay. Uh, anyway, so so um, so corollary of this is that um, if, if you compare what's on that board with what's on this board, you, you can see that um, this this perverse sheaf, the 
the intersection cohomology class on the regular neural point orbit is a composition factor um, of, uh, of, of the Springer sheaf. Um, you, you, you can tell that by looking at the, the regular nil point orbit. But by looking at the, the stock over zero, well, this stock here, which is non-zero in two degrees, is not a direct sum end of the stock of A. So the whole perverse sheaf cannot be a direct sum end of, of, uh, of the Springer sheaf. Um, so in particular, um, uh, AK is not semi-simple. Okay, um, so here's the, so the next exercise is to determine uh, what the structure of AK actually is. Um, so, um, I, maybe th th this is not, I, I, and, and, and I was planning to write hard on the board. It, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more than medium, maybe. Um, so, so, um, so the next exercise is to show that, um, that well, this failure of semi-simplicity, it really happens exactly in, in, in characteristic two. So, so I'll, I'll tell you um, what it is. So, so, so A, it, it, if K is C, you, uh, you know the answer. You, you, you know what A looks like because of, you know about this, the Springer correspondence in, in um, characteristic zero already. And it's the sum of, um, the, the, the two intersection cohomology complexes. And um, in characteristic zero, each one of those is secretly multiplied by a one-dimensional vector space on which the vial group acts uh, trivially in one case and by the sign character in the other case. So this is if uh, the characteristic of K is not two. And uh, this uh, perverse sheaf is indecomposable Otherwise, so if it's indecomposable if, if the characteristic of K is two. And in fact, um, uh, in fact, um, it, it has the following composition series. Um, so it, uh, it's, it's, Uniserial, um, and it has the the this ICC not of course I mean that's a that's the constant chief on a point so that, that's a skyscraper chief. It has that as its um, as its unique simple quotient. Then in the middle, it has uh, the IC on the regular orbit, which we already discussed a little bit. And then its Sokol is again the skyscraper. Um, Okay. Um, so, uh, well, anyway, th those are those are some things to uh, to think about. Um, so, so, so let me uh, tell you a bit about sort of how this uh, fits into. Um, the broader context. Um, so, so as I said, I mean, uh, all, all the powerful tools that, that I just got through erasing, they're have what made um, complex or elatic perverse sheaves so, so useful. Um, so the the use of modular perverse sheaves, I mean, it was, it was slower getting started, um, but there's been a, a lot of progress, um, in, especially in the past decade or so. Um, so here are some some of the highlights. Um, so maybe uh, one one significant uh, early result was around 2000. Uh, so Zergel um, explained a relationship between uh, perverse sheaves on the flag variety with coefficients in, in a field of positive characteristic, and these are supposed to be. Um, uh, constructible with respect to the the Bruja stratification, and he, well, he explained a relationship between this this category and and something called modular category O. Um, 
So this has a, a, a flavor quite similar to a uh, category for a Lie algebra, which, which uh, we learned about in Nick's talk. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a linear category over, over the field K. So it's, it's some category of representations um, for an algebraic group uh, G over K. Um, so that, that was, that, well, so, so, so that was one such result. Um, then in, in 2007, I mean, the result is really older than that, but I guess 2007 is, is the publication date. Um, so the, the, the mirkovich volonin version of, uh, uh, of geometric Satake. Um, so we've, we've heard a fair amount about geometric Satake, mostly with, with complex coefficients, but, but the, 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 the mirkovich volonin proof of this statement um, uh, allows arbitrary coefficients, not just field coefficients actually, even integer coefficients are okay. So the, the statement is something like this. So, so you, you take uh, perverse sheaves on the affine Grassmannian uh, with coefficients in, in whatever you want. And um, that's equivalent as a tensor category to representations of, um, of, uh, of the, the dual group over K. Um, so if, if, K is a, I mean, if K is an algebraically closed field, then, then you just say the words algebraic group. But otherwise, um, it, well, the, the, the category of representations of the split group scheme of the, of the appropriate type over K. And then um, another thing, which is also from 2007, uh, is uh, Daniel Juteau's thesis. Um, and this is the, the subject of the, the first part of the talk. And um, so, uh, so the, the subject of, that, of his thesis is, is modular Springer correspondence. And um, before I, before I uh, ex explain that, l let me just mention that, I mean, as I said, in recent years, there, there have been a, a, a lot of advances that you know, um, are starting to, to show us what kinds of ideas and what kinds of techniques you can use to uh, get around the fact that the decomposition theorem and purity and weights are, are unavailable. And so some of the, some of the leading contributors to this are uh, P Peter Fiebig and Carl Mautner and uh, Jordi Williamson, and, and there, there are many others uh, uh, as well. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, so um, so well, uh, so here's the here's the the the, the result from from Juto's thesis. Um, uh, I, I guess I actually I need I need to set up a, a, a bit of notation. So so um, I've drawn this main diagram on the board uh, a, a bunch of times by by now. But anyway, here's here's the diagram again. Uh, so there's n tilde. Sitting inside G tilde, and then over here there's G tilde R S, the re regular semi-simple set. Okay, and then um, the the definition of the Springer sheaf. I mean, it's the same as uh, as over there or as in my previous talks, but I'll I'll just write it down again. So it's a, um, you push forward the constant sheaf with value k, shift by the dimension of the nilpotent cone. And, and restrict to, to the nilpotent cone. Um, so, so here are the 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 two uh, here are the two main facts about it. Um, so, uh, so so one is that um, the endomorphism ring of uh, the the Springer sheaf uh, is the is the group ring of the vial group, but now it's the it's the group ring of the vial group uh, with co you know coefficients in K. Um, so when I wrote down the same isomorphism on Wednesday with complex coefficients, um, that immediately told you basically everything there is to know about the the structure 
of, of this thing because you knew in advance that the Springer sheaf was, was semi-simple, and you also knew that this ring was a semi-simple ring. But of course, in positive characteristic, if, I mean, if the characteristic divides the order of W, then it's definitely not going to be semi-simple. And um, you can already tell, I mean, if you look at the example of, uh, of GL2, well, the value group is Z mod 2. Um, the group ring of Z mod 2 with coefficients in the field of characteristic 2 is, well, it, it, I mean, it, it's, it has a unique simple module. I mean, the, the trivial and sign characters become the same in characteristic 2. Um, and it's, it's two-dimensional, and you know, as, a, as a module over itself, it, you know, it has a composition series of length 2. But the Springer sheaf has a composition series of length 3. So somehow it's, it's, uh, it's clear that, that uh, this, um, this can't tell you everything about, about, about A. Um, Yeah. Is that so um, there, it's it's not so much. Well, uh, so I'll, I'll I'll say something about that in in, in, in a moment. Um, so so um, yeah. So 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 the, the the reason to work on on the nilpotent cone is that is that um, Juto's original proof um, uses Fourier transform, and um, initially it wasn't clear. I mean, so in the, in the I mean. I, I guess at the end of yesterday's lecture, I mentioned that on the Lie algebra with complex coefficients, there are two ways to get from the from sort of the Galois side of, of this of, of this main diagram to, to the automorphic side. You can either just restrict to the subvariety, or you can apply Fourier transform. And the the difficulty is that um, if you if you just restrict, um, it's hard to tell whether the uh, map of endomorphism rings is an isomorphism. And it turns out in this case that that it is, and there. Are Proofs that appeared later after Juto's thesis that showed that, um, but when I mean in 15 minutes I'm going to talk about you know modular generalized Springer correspondence and, and there that that kind of result isn't known yet. Um, so so Fourier transform sort of lets you avoid those kinds of I mean it lets you avoid that problem in particular, and Fourier transform is only available on the Lie algebra. So um, so you know the you can do I mean if you're if you if if you think of the goal as being to describe the, the category of G equivariant perverse sheaves on, on the nilpotent cone or the unipotent variety, you could do it all on the nilpotent cone and the varieties are isomorphic. So then you can you can transfer it. But if you want to do the proofs in the group setting right right now, that, that mostly doesn't work. So right now the, the, the proofs really require you to be on the Lie algebra. So um, Okay. Um, so, uh, so w w what do you do with this? Um, so, uh, staring at this equation doesn't tell you very much about the structure of A. But what you can do is you can, you can um, well, y y you have to sort of dig in a little bit to sort of how the various pieces of the, of, of the proof interact. So, this, this A has, uh, has two constructions. You can either define it by this formula that I wrote here, or you can take some local system on GRS, apply an intermediate extension functor, and then take Fourier transform of that. And then at a, at a certain step along there, well, well let me write down the, the, the statement. Um, the statement that, that Juto proved is that, um, and this is, this is the modular Springer correspondence, is that there's a bijection between irreducible modules for KW and um, simple quotients of the Springer sheaf. Um, so this, uh, this is the bijection. Um, th this, is the, th this is the thing which is called modular, uh, the, the modular Springer correspondence. Um, Um, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll mention very briefly that, 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 that the proof, I mean, uh, the, the statement that I wrote down with complex coefficients a couple days ago said simple sum ends. So simple sum ends doesn't work here, but simple quotients does. Um, and the proof, uh, you, well, the proof involves studying, in, in studying some, some features of, um, of the, the intermediate extension functor 
that you're not used to having to pay attention to when you work in just characteristic zero. So, okay. Um, all right. Uh, so, So maybe I'll, uh, I'll introduce a bit of notation and, and rephrase this in, in, a, in a slightly more familiar, yes? Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's right. So you, you um, right, so you list the isomorphism classes of, of simple, uh, simple perverse sheaves that arise as quotients of A. The, the multiplicities are going to be the same as, um, you know, the multiplicities of those modules as quotients of the, of the regular representation for the, for the vial group. So, um, the, yeah, the, so the, the, the sort of the structure of the proof is that, that, um, that this isomorphism doesn't tell you about the inside of A, but it tells you about, it, 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 it matches up the socal and the cosocal of, of, of A exactly with, with uh, this, this uh, with a regular representation as a module for W. So. Okay, so um, so here's some some notation. So let X G K. Um, so X G, I, I used this notation yesterday to mean the set of pairs C E. So it means the same thing except it depends on K because uh, um, this is well, this is a, a nilpotent orbit. Um, and this is an irreducible G equivariant K local system uh, on, uh, on, on C. Um, and uh, well, local systems are, they're representations of these, of these, uh, of these A groups. Um, and so uh, if the characteristic happens to divide the order of, the, of, of one of those A groups, then that changes the number of irreducible local systems you can have. But th it's still true that this is, um, that you sort of identify this with uh, the set of simple perverse sheaves with coefficients in, in K. Um, so, so uh, you know, you can r rephrase, uh, re you can rephrase the, the, the last theorem of, of, of a bit. Um, you, you get an injective map uh, from irreducible KW modules to x g k, and the the uh, the image is uh, uh, is simple objects that, that are quotients of uh, that are uh, yeah, qu quotients of the Springer sheaf. Okay. Um, So, uh, so there's um, so there's there's a bit more. I mean, yeah. So I guess I I, I, I mentioned a, a moment ago that that the the structure of the the socal and cosocal of, of this perverse sheaf. Is something that that um, you can read off if you know the, the structure of the socal and cosocal of, of, of the regular representation. Um, there's there's a bit more than that. So 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 another result from from Juto's thesis is that um, you can is 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 well the the summary is that is that decomposition numbers match. Um, so. So here's here's what I mean. So if you take a, um, so let E be a, uh, um, a, a a characteristic zero uh, W representation, and then you can choose um, you can choose say a a a, 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 a p-adic form of it. 
and then um, and then tensor with the residue field. Uh, and then you get um, a you, you get a characteristic p representation. And in general, the characteristic p representation you get is not going to be simple. Um, I guess. I, uh, let me start with an irreducible up here. So if you start with an irreducible, of course, the thing you get in characteristic P in general will not be irreducible. And you can ask, well, what are the multiplicities of, uh, of various um, uh, irreducible characteristic P representations in it? Um, so these numbers are, are called decomposition numbers. Um, so the notation is something like D, E, F. So E is uh, an irreducible uh, characteristic zero uh, representation, and f is an irreducible um, uh, positive characteristic representation. Maybe I should change that uh, c to a qp. That looks a little bit better. But anyway, um, pretty similar. And then you can you can you can do the same kind of thing for uh, for perverse sheaves as well. Um, you can take characteristic zero perverse sheaves. And you can choose some p-adic uh, form and do modular reduction and compute these decomposition numbers. Um, so, um, so, So the, the theorem is that uh, um, is that uh, this dec this decomposition number for group representations is equal to the decomp the, the corresponding decomposition number for uh, perverse sheaves. So this is the perverse sheaf uh, corresponding to E, which is a characteristic zero perverse sheaf, and the perverse sheaf uh, corresponding to to F. Um, and um, and you get some uh, well, there's there's some kind of information flow in both directions. Uh, there's this perverse sheaf, the, the Springer sheaf, which looks kind of complicated and hard to study. And then there's the modular representation theory of W, which looks complicated and, and hard to study. But um, sometimes uh, it's useful to convert one hard question into a different hard question. So this tells you that that um, st that studying decomposition numbers for for vial group representations it can be turned into a topological question, and and going the other way um, there's a you I mean going the other way you know at some point you want to do some computations you want to know what's actually in the image of of, of of the of the modular generalized Springer correspondence what what perverse sheaves do you get and for GL two we computed it I mean you can see the the unique simple quotient up on on that top board still. Um, um, but basically, this uh, plays a plays a role in uh, in the determination uh, of the image uh, of uh, of the uh, of the of the of the modular Springer correspondence. So this. Um, So this determination of the image for 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 GLN, um, I'll I'll tell you what it is for GLN. This was already in Juteau's thesis. It's um, exactly the the uh, intersection cohomology complexes on um, uh, nilpotent orbits. Well, they're supposed to be labeled by by some kind of partition. Uh, does anyone in the audience want to guess what kind of partition? Uh, uh, p, p regular is one possible guess. Does anyone want to make a a dual guess? Uh, um, well, I mean, um, yeah. So, 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 because Daniel used Fourier transform, the answer is p-restricted. Um, if you do it with, uh, if you use restriction instead, it, you, you you do get p-regular. Uh, and then for for other classical groups, um, uh, this is uh, work of uh, Juteau, uh, Le Couvet, Sorin, and then there's. Um, there, well, there, there are other cases where um, 
I think I'll, I'll say a bit later what, what, what happens in, in the other cases. Okay, so, um, Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, I have no idea. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so... So the next topic, oh, actually, um, I mean, the next topic was going to be the, the, the modular generalized spring recourse monks, but um, there's one thing I want to mention before, before I forget. So this is, this is kind of a, I, I, incidental, but um, yesterday, Nick told us about uh, the borel moore homology of the Steinberg variety. Um, and he told us that it uh, was the group ring of the, the vial group. And, um, uh, you know, that, that's certainly tied up with, with um, the kinds of things that, that I've been talking about. And in fact, you know, I, I described one particular construction of the, the Springer correspondence in my talks, but there are lots of others. And in Victor's book, which has been mentioned a few times, um, uh, you can uh, use this, you can use this Borel-Moore homology computation to construct the Springer correspondence um, w without, I mean, it's, I mean, in, in the end, the correspondence is, is the same, but the construction looks quite, it has quite a different flavor from, uh, uh, from, from what I've been talking about. And um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an unpublished paper of Simon Riche. Um, it's on his webpage, and it has, the, it has a note next to it that says, uh, text not destined to be published. Um, uh, where he works out, he, he, he works out the, the, this kind of construction in positive characteristic. Uh, so a, a Borel-Moore homology uh, approach to, uh, um, to, to the modular Springer correspondence. Okay. All right. Um, All right, so um, so now, uh, well, you, you you know it's coming next. Um, there is an injective map on the board which is not surjective. And so uh, the problem which um, my whole talk yesterday was about, um, and now I'll spend about 10 minutes on it, uh, is uh, to ex ex explain the missing pairs. Um, um, so I think I'm just going to jump directly to the statement of the theorem. Uh, I mean, the setup, um, the, the setup has very much the, the same flavor um, as, uh, as the things I talked about yesterday. Um, and this is, a, this is a joint work of myself and Anthony Henderson and uh, Daniel Juteau and Simon Riche. Um, and there's a, I'm gonna, there's a statement that I'm going to put at the beginning in, in brackets. Um, if G has a factor of type E8, um, uh, assume that, that the characteristic is not 2. Uh, and it's in brackets because um, it really should be possible to delete that. It's somehow an artifact of the way the proof works at the moment that there's some calculation. It, it, it's, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the obstacle is, yeah, essentially some calculation that we don't know how to do, and the calculation is not in E8 itself, it's in E7, um, but it, it, it's, it's blocking this. But, uh, but I'm, you know, anyway, it ought to be true, even in this case. So, um, so the statement is, uh, 
is this. So the statements I'm going to write on the board, they're, they're going to look exactly like statements I wrote yesterday. So for every pair CE in uh, this uh, set XGK, uh, there exists a triple L C naught E naught unique up to conjugacy. Um, such that, uh, well, C naught E naught is a cuspidal pair for uh, for L. Oh, I've I guess I forgot to say that um, um, induction and restriction. Um, maybe I should actually write this on the board. Um, induction and restriction are still defined, and they're still exact functors. They're certainly not. They, they certainly don't preserve semi-simplicity anymore. I mean, already the fact that the Springer sheaf can fail to be semi-simple tells you that. Um, but, but they are still defined. And um, the proof of exactness, you can still use the, the, the part of Braden's work that, that doesn't have the word weights in it. Um, so um, yeah, I guess this will, I'll go back up, up top in, in a moment. But uh, um, yeah, maybe here. So note, ind and res are still defined and still exact. OK. Um, so uh, and cuspidal has the same definition. means that it's restriction to any levy is 0. So there's a unique uh, triple like this. Uh, and um, yesterday, the, the theorem was that uh, the pair you start with is a direct sum end of the induced thing. Well, now it's not going to be a direct sum end. It's going to be a quotient. Um, so, uh, uh, so that means so as soon as you have this uh, list of triples, that means you can uh, split up XGK into induction series. So. This is identical to something I wrote on the board yesterday, except it has a subscript k on all the pieces. And then um, part b of the theorem is that um, each induction series uh, is uh, in bijection with irreducible representations of o over k of this relative vial group. Um, and I think um, yesterday, I, uh, I tried to emphasize that, that sort of getting this bijection, which really amounts to showing that the endomorphism ring of, of an induced perverse sheaf is this group ring. That was the hardest part. And I think that's also the hardest part here. Um, and it's, 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 it's harder in positive characteristic. Um, so this is the. The, the hardest part. Well, there's a bit that's hard in part A, too. Uh, there, there, well, there are several hard parts. Um, the, you know, the, the, the broad outline of the proof, it, 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 it follows the, the ideas that, that, I, that I wrote on the board yesterday. You know, I had like steps one through five or something. So it's, it's the same kind of steps, but there, there are lots of complications in, in, in each step. Um, so then you, you know, then you combine these and um, uh, you, you get a bijection um, um, be between between these sets. Um, uh, I want to spend a moment giving you a flavor of, of what this is like. Um, um, the, uh, so for, for, for GLN, um, the set XGK is independent of K because, um, because all the A groups are trivial. There are no non-trivial local systems in any characteristic. So XGK is just a set of unipotent or nilpotent orbits, and that, that doesn't change. So it's independent of K, 
but the size of um, the set of irreducible representations is, of course, very dependent on k. And it's, um, well, it's usually, well, I guess in, in the cases where you're interested in it, it, it can be a lot smaller than, than the set of um, irreducible complex representations. So if you've got the same set on the left, but you're shrinking the sets on the right, of course, that means you have to have more pieces on the right. And uh, so you expect uh, more cuspidals um, in positive characteristic. And that's, in fact, what, 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 what happens. Um, in characteristic zero, there are no cuspidals at all. Um, so, so in characteristic zero, there, there are no cuspidals on any levy of GLN except the torus. Um, but in characteristic P, there's a, there's a kind of, um, well, a fun looking phenomenon. So um, the, the levies of the form, well, so what's a levy of GLN? It's a product of smaller GLs where the, the sizes add up to N. So here's the, here's the condition. You need to take smaller GLs whose sizes are powers of P. So if you take GLP to the I1, GLP to the I2. So if you can write N in some way as a sum of powers of P, then you get a levy which supports, uh, 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 well, this, this has a cuspidal, uh, it has a cuspidal pair. Oh, hat. Um, so, yeah, so in initially, like, uh, the first step, I mean, bef before this theorem was proved, um, the, the sort of first evidence for it was that um, the combinatorics worked out, that uh, um, if you sort of add up the number of mod P representations of all the relative vial groups for levies like that, you get exactly the, the total number of partitions of N. So, okay, and then the, um, in the last couple of minutes, um, I want to say a, a word about what other structure might be here. Um, so, in characteristic zero, um, the category of equivariant perverse sheaves on, on the nilpotent cone, you, you can take this, uh, this, uh, this Springer correspondence, this bijection of sets, and upgrade it to a, an equivalence of categories. Um, and, uh, well, there's, uh, there's not a lot going on here because every category in sight is semi-simple. So, of course, if you sort of match up the objects, then there, there's, there's an equivalence of categories. Um, in characteristic P, um, well, things are not semi-simple, and uh, sometimes not semi-simple is a synonym for more interesting. Um, so there's a, there's a theorem, um, right now it's only for GLN. Um, I, I mean, I think a theorem like this should be true in general, um, but well, you know, there are lots of things that, that one doesn't yet understand. So one of the things one doesn't yet understand is um, things like uh, X groups between uh, cuspidal perverse sheaves in, in, in positive characteristics. So, so for GLN, um, this is a computation one, one, one can do. And so here's the statement. Um, the category of equivariant perverse sheaves on, uh, on the nil point for GLN uh, has a filtration uh, by SER subcategories. So, uh, so let's call them A0, A1. A2, et cetera. And the, the, the number of steps in this filtration, um, well, it's, it's supposed to be, uh, I guess it, I guess I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll finish this over here. Um, it's, it's the number of um, pieces in, in this disjoint union over here. 
Um, so, so the statement is that is that um, the uh, well, it's it's some kind of associated grade kind of statement, uh, such that when you take a i mod a i minus one, it's equivalent to the category of representations uh, in positive characteristic. I mean, in the appropriate you know, over the appropriate field of the appropriate relative vial group um, uh, where these, uh, well, the, the, these, uh, these isomorphisms are parameterized by um, uh, the same triples that appear in the, in the, in the generalized Springer correspondence. So and there's a there's a, a little bit more. So there are these Sarah subcategories. So this so per, the category of all perverse sheaves is somehow built up from these uh, these representation categories. And uh, and if you know the word recoilment, uh, there is a there's a there's a recoilment structure here. Um, so anyway, so I, I I expect that this should be true for 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 all groups. But anyway, that's what we know so far. Okay, so I guess I'll stop there.